All right, we're gonna be looking at interacting with objects in Unity. Regardless of what you're interacting with, it usually boils down to three simple steps. Step one, you need to know when you're in range to interact with something. Step two, some sort of input needs to be entered to engage the interaction. And step three is just to perform whatever action is supposed to happen. So in this Unity tutorial, we'll be trying to make some generic tools we can use to interact with objects. And we'll be powering these tools using Unity events, which is a great resource to learn if you haven't before. So let's get started. So as usual, let's go over what I set up in this demo scene here. We have our player, which just has a rigid body 2D, a box collider 2D, and a character controller. The controller is really basic. You can just move left and right, and that's it. We have this chess prefab with a box collider 2D and a chess controller. The chess controller just has an is open bool and an animator, and this public method of open chest where you check to see if it's closed, and if it is, you set is open to true and tell the animator to change the sprite from being closed to being opened. This is how it will look in game when it's open and when it's closed. We also have this sign that says no treasure behind this door. You know, quite frankly, I don't believe that. In fact, I think it's very obvious there's treasure behind this door, but we have a problem. It appears to be locked. So we need to find a key to open this door and I'll show you how we can go about implementing that. The first thing we wanna do is create a new script though. So we can right click on assets and create C sharp script. I already have one here called interactable that's empty, so we'll open that up. So as mentioned in the intro, we basically need to identify three things. We need to know if we're in range of interacting, we need to press a button to engage the interaction, and then we need to actually do something. And so we can make variables that reflect exactly that. We can make a public bool is in range, which defaults to false. We can have a public key code, interact key, and a public unity event, interact action. So let's see how this actually translates into the Unity editor. I'm going to create an empty object and I'm just gonna drag my interactable script onto it. And we'll see, we have this bool interact key we can open up and it's a list of inputs. So you can use any input here. We have a Unity event down here, which is really cool. So we can actually add listeners if we hit the plus and then we can drag in objects. So let's say the chest. This allows us to select from a variety of different functions, including any public functions that are from components attached to the game object you passed in. So on our chess controller, we can actually find our open chest method we made earlier, and we'll use that just for now. For the sake of this tutorial and keeping things simple, we'll set the interact key to E, which is a conventionally standard use key. But even if we have all these fields set up, how do we actually make this do anything? Let's go back into our script and flesh this out a little more. So the first thing we wanna do is in our update, we need to be checking to see if we're in range. So we can simply just say, if is in range, then we need to see if the player is pressing the key. So we can say, if input dot get key down, interact key. So if they're in range and they press the key, we wanna fire our unity event. And to do that, you simply just say, interact action dot invoke. And when we invoke every event listener on this event will actually fire off their function. This is the guts of what we want it to do, but how do we actually know if we're in range? Well, on this game object, we need to add some sort of collider to it. And this is where we can actually add some versatility to this. So check this out. I'm gonna reset our interactable script and add a circle collider 2D. And I'll call this interactable circle. I could then duplicate this and call it interactable box. Instead of a circle collider 2D, we can remove that. We can add a box collider 2D. And in both of these, make sure you set trigger to true. And we could turn these into prefabs. So just drag these game objects into your assets folder. In our chest on the scene, we can drag our interactable circle onto the chest, which will make it a child of it. And we can reset the position of the circle. And we can press this edit collider and drag it out to be a little large. That's fine for me and we'll reset it. And so now we can redo what we did before. I'll set this to E, I'll add a listener, I'll drag the chest in and we'll say open chest. At this point, we have just about everything hooked up. We just need to know when our player is intersecting with this radius to know that we're in range. Back in our interactable script, let's add a new method of void on trigger enter 2D. We'll use the compare tag. So we'll say if collision.gameobject.compare tag, and we'll type in player for the tag. In the editor, you can click on your player and then up here in the tag, you can select player. So if the player is in range, we need to set is in range to true. I'll also add this log statement for debugging. And then we can add one more method of void on trigger exit 2D. So on trigger enter gets called when you first intersect and on trigger exit 2D gets called when you stop intersecting. We can actually just copy paste that code and instead of is in range to true, we set that to false and we'll update the log statement as well. 
Okay, so let's give it a test. Now in play mode, we can walk towards the chest. We'll get a log statement. The player is now in range. We can press our interact key of E, which fires the unity event to open this chest. If the player walks in range and then exits the range and presses the interact key, nothing will happen. But as soon as you come back in range, it will work, which is great. So now when you make another instance of your chest prefab, you'll have multiple chests in your scene and each one should already be set up to interact with. So at this point, you can just fine tweak what each one would give you without having to do much work in the editor. Let's turn our attention now to unlocking this door and getting all the treasure. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to add a player manager script to my player. This script's just going to hold a key count and have a method to increase the key count by one. Back on our interactable circle on the chest, we can hit the plus to add a new event listener. And this time we could drag on our player and go to player manager, pick up key. And we can make it so the other chest does not have this listener so that they have to choose between them. Just to illustrate that the behavior of these two prefabs does not have to be the same, even though they are the same prefab. So with our player selected, our key count starts at zero. So if we walk over to the left and open this chest, it should increase to one, which it does. And if we go to the one on the right and open it, it should not increase and it does not. This is a good example of two instances of an event with different sets of listeners and different behaviors. You can also pass in arguments with Unity events, making them even more powerful. Let's focus our attention back on the door, and we'll use unlocking it as an example. First, let's create a new C Sharp script, and I'll call this door controller. We'll attach it to the door prefab. In our door controller, let's just make a public bool is open, similar to the chest. And we also need a public void open door method, and we'll pass in a game object. This time let's use the interactable box. So we'll take our prefab and drag it onto the door. I'll set the interact key to E, same as before, and I'll add an event listener. For the object, we'll pass in the door, and under door controller, we'll call open door. You'll notice we have a field here now for a game object we can pass in, and for this, we're actually gonna pass in our player. So why are we passing in our player? Well, the main reason is we wanna be able to look at the key count on our player manager. And while I will admit to you up front that there are more elegant solutions to this, I still think this is a worthwhile example. So in here, we can do a check for player manager equals obj.getComponent of type player manager. So what this is doing is taking whatever game object was passed in and searching it for a component called player manager. If it finds it, it'll stash in the variable. Otherwise, this variable will be null. So we can say if manager, then we can check the manager.keyCount if it's greater than zero. And if it is, we can set is open equal to true. I'll make a new method in our player manager quick to decrement the key count. And I'll call that back in our door controller. So manager dot use key. We only want to be doing this when our door is closed. So we can wrap this entire thing in an if statement of if is open. So let's test it out. And so now we can go over our door, press E to try and open it. We don't get our doors open message. We can pick up a key quick and come back. And now the door is unlocked. At this point, we built the foundation of what we're trying to accomplish here. So I'm just gonna quickly add some little touches to it to make it look a little nicer. I quickly went through and made a closed and open animation for the door so we can visually tell there's a difference. And I also added an audio clip to it that plays when you unlock it. I'm not gonna cover animation in this tutorial, but I do have a tutorial for sound effects that I'll put in the card above and also in the description below. I also quickly added this UI element to have a notification alert above our player's head when he can interact with something. How I'm doing this is in our interactable script. I'm just checking for the player manager component and calling notify player and denotify player, which just sets this notification game object to true or false when we enter and exit the collider's radius. Finally, back in our door controller in our open door method, what happens when we interact with our door when it's already open? Logic says we should probably go through it. So let's implement that really fast. We can add an else condition after our if statement so that if we're interacting on this and the door is already open, then we can call our scene manager load scene and we'll say scene manager get active scene dot build index plus one. And what this line is doing is just taking the active scene, getting the build index of it, adding one to it and then loading it. And so if we go to file build settings, we have our sample scene in here, which is our scene with the door and the chests, which has a build index of zero. And we can add in our treasure room scene, which has a build index of one. And so when we unlock the door, we should be able to go through it. And so I know we covered a lot, especially at the end there, it went kind of quick, but at this point we put enough of the system together to get started and there's nothing left to do. So let's get some treasure. Huh. 
I guess there really was no treasure. 